Good morning, everyone. I think we can go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Alex. I will be conducting today's webinar just like I do each and every time. For those of you that are here for the first time, welcome. For those of you that are joining us again, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, I just want to run down because we got a full house today. I just want to run down how everything works. Um, up in the upper left hand corner of your screen, you should see a button for Q&A as well as a button for chat. If at any point in time you have a question regarding your website or a question regarding what uh, what we're talking about, go ahead and use the Q&A button to submit your question. Um, you only have to submit it the one time. Um, if it's not related to what we're talking about, I'll set it aside and we do a Q&A session at the end uh, where we'll tackle questions of, of any nature that you might have. So. Again, if you have any questions, utilize the Q&A feature. Um, if you have any comments, um, if you'd like me to repeat myself, slow down, cover something uh, again, by all means, utilize the chat feature and let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, again, utilize the Q&A portion to, uh, to submit those. <clears throat> um, our webinar is also being recorded. Um, all of our webinars are recorded and the videos are then uploaded and stored in the education portal, which I will show you. In our education portal, if you click on solutions and you scroll down and you see the health coach webinars, this is where all of the videos are located. Uh, we always do the, the most recent one first. So this is the last one we did here, the social media. Um, this week's webinar, today's webinar will be here later on this afternoon. Um, and it'll be the first video right under re webinar registration. So, so if you don't worry if you have to hop off, if you can't stick around for the entire thing, don't worry about it. You can always go back and rewatch the video, um, pause and rewind, whatever you need to do to get caught up on what you missed. <clears throat> Again, if you have any questions, utilize the Q&A feature. Um, that helps me keep track of all the questions, make sure we can I can get to them all. Uh, Liz asked a question, the series runs how long? Um, I'm intending on it running five parts. So we'll do one part every week for the next five weeks. We'll take a break for the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, but then we'll resume up right after that. So that's the plan. I generally try to stick to that plan. Um, it really kind of depends on how every, every day goes. Sometimes we don't get to cover as much as I'd like uh, because of questions and whatever, but I'm gonna try really hard to stick to the five parts this time, so. Uh, with that said, um, I don't know if anybody has checked out previously. We did one of these last year. Well, this is, I think, the, the third time I've done a series like this. Um, in our webinar video gallery, you'll see the, the 2017 edition, uh, where we started with the website and we built it out page by page. Um, and that took a total of seven parts. Uh, we're going to do the same thing this year, um, just a little bit different. I'm not going to go over every single page, just kind of cover the, the general concepts. Uh, we're going to have some, some guests with us over the next few weeks. Um, we're going to have a, a member of our design team talk about how you can make your website look professional and so forth. And we're going to have a member of our SEO team come in at the end and talk about all the things that you can do to the web, that we can do to the website to make it more searchable for potential clients and so forth. So that's kind of the rundown of, of how everything is going to work. Um, today is really just getting started. So we're going to literally get started. We're going to go ahead and order up our site and talk about the different template options and kind of do some a little, a little bit of that planning stuff today. And then next week we'll continue on and progress to, to uh, choosing colors and so forth and that kind of thing. So that's what we're covering today. Um, hopefully everybody finds it helpful. Um, we'll talk about the different templates. We'll talk about our getting started checklist that we have available for you to use and just some of the basics of, of helping you get oriented and started with your website. So that's the plan for today. So hopefully we can get to everything and uh, kind of keep things on track. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to utilize the Q&A feature. Uh, we will do a general uh, question and answer session at the end. That'll cover whatever questions you have. Um, but for the time being, I'll kind of keep things on track as much as possible. So, so Alexis, your question, I will answer that after the, uh, the session in the Q&A portion, if that's all right. All right, so what we're going to do today, like I said, is we're gonna get started. So we're actually gonna order up our, 
our, our website that we're going to be working on. We're going to go through that whole process. So um, every one of you has or should have or will soon receive your trial invitation. And when you click on that trial invitation, you're taken to a page that looks very much like this that presents you the, the, the template options that we have available. So we have our six template options. We have the Foodie Bonanza and the Forks and Spoons, Health Coach Professional, Organic, Zest, and Saver. When you hover over each one of these um, templates, you'll see that there's a button to preview that. So you can click on that button and you can kind of get a general sense of what this page would look like on a computer, also as well on a phone. There's also a button up here called Live Demo. You can click Live Demo and what that does is it presents you with a, a real example of the site. So I can actually scroll through the pages, I can click on the buttons, I can navigate to the different pages on the website. So this is really, really fantastic. And if you are getting started with your website, if you haven't chosen your template, I strongly recommend taking the time to do this. You can flip through every page that comes with the website so you can see what it looks like. You can kind of get a sense and a feel for what this template can do. And it should help you decide which template to go, to go with. Um, if you've already chosen your template, that's totally fine. You can switch your template if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to cover that too much. Um, if you have questions on that, you can submit your question. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the Q&A portion. Um, but generally, when you are getting started, we really want to encourage you to take the time to kind of flip through the different templates and kind of just um, get a better sense of, of what they are and what they can do and what they offer, as opposed to just picking one that you think looks nice. Um, and the example that I'm going to use is the health coach professional. So everybody picks this particular template because they think it looks nice. And it does. It's a beautiful template. It's got this lovely uh, large picture here and, and everything. But what people generally fail to realize is your menu, which is the, the navigation to your different pages, you actually have to click this button up here and open it up over here. And that happens on every single page. So you have to click that button and open that menu. Me, personally, I don't like that feature. This is my least favorite template just for that reason. Um, so I always tell people, if you pick this template because you, you like that picture, you don't have to. You can, do, you can put that same picture or a picture just like it or a very large picture on any template. What you should be focusing on when you're choosing your template, and this is this is applicable even if you've already um, picked your template, what you should focus on is not what they look like. You should focus on two things. One, where the menu is. And what I mean by that is where is your menu? On the forks and spoons, it's up on the top. If we go back to the other ones, in the, in the Foodie Bonanza, you can see it's kind of in the middle here. Uh, we already talked about the Health Coach Pro, how you have to click that button and open it up on the left-hand side. Uh, the organic template is very much like the Forks and Spoons template, where the menu is up on the top. The saver is a little bit more like the Foodie Bonanza one, where it's kind of in the middle. And the Zest template is very much like the Health Coach Pro, where it's on the left-hand side. You just don't have to click a button to open it. So those are, that's the main thing that I strongly suggest when you're considering your template is where you want your menu located because you can't move it. Um, if you pick the organic template, which thank you, Alyssa, I'll make note of that. She pointed out that this is spelled wrong. It's missing the G. So I'm going to make a note of that and get that fixed. Um, but like with the organic template, if you pick this template and you want the menu over on the left hand side, you can't. It's all the menus are, are coded to be in a certain location based on the template. That's why we have different options available. So that's why I encourage you to take some time and, and preview the different templates and kind of get a sense of if, if you like having your menu option located on the top or if you want it to have it more on the side or if you want it to have uh, more in the middle like the Foodie Bonanza ones and so forth. So that's one of the other options. Uh, one of the, th the important things to consider. Um, the other one really is when you're flipping through the, the templates, you can kind of get a sense for how the different 
templates can be laid out. Um, so for example, in the saver one, when we scroll down, we can see we have some boxes right here. We have some different kinds of content areas. It's harder to see when you're not logged in, but you can kind of get a sense to say, okay, well, I have, I have two areas here where I could put stuff if I wanted to. Um, I have three areas down here. Okay, I could maybe work with that a little bit. Um, you can browse through some of the other pages and you can kind of just see how the different content is laid out. So you can see, okay, there's three pieces of content. There's text, another text, and an image. So that means that I have three areas, three columns right there that I can, I can work with. If I go to a different template like Foodie Bonanza, for example, I'm gonna see that kind of the same thing. I'm gonna see here's some content here and here's some content here. So I have two areas. I also have these three columns down at the bottom. So that's very much like the saver template where I have those three columns I can work with. Um, if we pop into a different one, uh, let's go with the zest template, for example. You know, we scroll through some of these things. Generally, you're gonna see the same kind of layout with, with each template, um, and that's good. The only, diff the only main difference between things is some of our newer templates like Health Coach Pro and Organic and Saver just have a little, a few more content areas available than the other three templates. But essentially everything you do with one template, you can do with another. So you don't have to necessarily worry so much about that. Um, like I said, really the, the main thing that people generally don't seem to like is where the menu is located. So I think that's one of the important things to consider when choosing your template. <clears throat> Again, if you have questions, please utilize the Q&A feature. Um, that helps me keep track to make sure that I can answer every question. Um, Elizabeth asks, which template do you recommend? I, like I said, it's really kind of a personal choice. Um, there really isn't anything you can't do with all six templates. Um, it's really kind of a personal choice based on the menu location and maybe how you might want to configure your content. Um, me personally, Health Coach Pro is my least favorite one because I don't like that button. Zest is my next least favorite just because I don't like the menu on the left hand side. Um, the other ones are all pretty much the same, so I, I, I don't really have a preference one way or the other. She has a follow-up, which is also a, a good statement. She says, what would you say calls more attention? Another thing to consider about these six templates. Okay, so right now we have 92 people sitting in this webinar. So out of the 92 people, how many people do you think are going to pick the for Foodie Bonanza template? and the Forks and Spoons template, and the Organic, and Health Coach Pro, and so forth. Now take those 92 people and multiply it by 100. We have thousands of health coaches who pick between these six templates. So one of the things that we really try to emphasize to, to health coaches is don't pick your template because of the way it looks, because we don't want you to keep it that way. All the templates have content, colors, pictures, and so forth, so you can see what they can look like. If we just gave you a blank slate with the web, you know, a, a blank white page to build your website on, you wouldn't have any idea what to do. So we put this content here to give you an idea of what you can do and make it a little bit easier so instead of creating brand new content, you can simply just change the stuff that's there. Change this picture here change this color there and so forth. Um, so when Elizabeth says, which would you say calls more attention? I can't really answer that because your job with your website is to change the way it looks so it's a representation of you. Right now, these are just six generic templates with pictures that our designers pick to come up with a color scheme. So I wouldn't really think about <clears throat> which one calls more attention, I would think about what you could possibly do with it. You know, if you like certain aspects of that template, then that's what you should go with. <clears throat> Let me see here.
okay, so this is a good question. Nyla says, I already have my website and mine is active and I used uh, Health Coach Pro. I didn't watch any webinars during my class time. Will I still learn things I can change in this new series starting today? If you've already have your website, like Nyla does, today is probably going to be a little repetitive for you. But overall, what we cover, I think can benefit people who are just starting, people who haven't started yet, or people who already have their website. Because your website's gonna be an evolving thing. It's always gonna change. You're, never gonna, you're not gonna just set your website up and never touch it again. So what you can take away from this is different techniques on how you can go about making some of those changes. Um, so in that regard, I think, yes, it could be beneficial for you. So I hope that that helps with, with that. Uh, Anastasia says, besides the menu, anything else that cannot be changed? Um, your logo is another option that can't be changed. So with the Foodie Bonanza template, your logo or your business name is located right here in the middle. So if you don't have a graphic logo, your business name will show up. Okay. Um, again, if you have a question, please, please, please submit via the Q&A button and not the chat feature. Um, so, Kristen, your question about templates, can you throw it into the Q&A, please? And I can make sure to get it when we get to our Q&A portion. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on changing website or changing templates now, um, but I will cover it in our Q&A if that's all right. Uh, okay, so the Foodie Bonanza, your logo is in the middle. The Forks and Spoons, your logo is going to be up in the upper left-hand corner right here. It's not this Forks and Spoons picture. This right here, this fork and spoon, this is just an image. It's absolutely no different than this picture of a woman or this picture over here. It doesn't really matter. This is just a picture. It's not your logo. Your logo is right up here, okay? People confuse that all the time. And it is a little misleading. It's a little confusing on how that's set up. But this is the logo area up here, not right here. This is just a picture. Same thing with Health Coach Pro. A lot of people get confused with this. Health Coach Pro, this right here, this Health Coach Professional, is just a picture. The logo is right here on your menu. Okay? That's where your logo is. That's where your business name is gonna be if you don't have a graphic logo. This is just a picture. This could say health coach professional. It could be a picture of this woman's face. It could be anything. It's just a picture. So that's not what your logo is gonna be. Um, the organic template, your logo is up in the upper left-hand corner, just like forks and spoons. Um, Saver, your logo is up in the upper left-hand corner, just like forks and spoons in organic. And Zest, your logo is up in the upper left corner on the menu, um, in, the, in the corner, just like on Health Coach Pro. Okay? So those are the other things that can't be changed. Those logo locations cannot be moved. Um, they are where they are. That's where they are in the template. Um, and then the other thing that can't be changed is the social media icons. So these are the social media icons that you can add in in your site settings, which we'll talk about when we go through the process. Um, those are coded to be in certain spots on every template. So those are the other, other options you, you can't change. Um, in Zest and Health Coach Pro, they show up here at the bottom of the menu. Um, in Saver, I want to say they show up in the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, right down here. And I want to say Health Foodie Bonanza, they appear, you can see it's up in the upper right hand corner, upper left hand corner here. Forks and Spoons, I want to say, is also down in the lower left. Oh, right in the middle, down in the bottom in the middle. You'll see that. And I can't remember where Organic one is. Organic is down in the lower right, down there. So those are the, the three main things that can't be changed. So those are other things that you can consider when choosing your template as where you want some of that stuff to be. Uh, Katrina says, there's a notification that we were disabled from the Q&A option. There shouldn't be. We, I've got a ton of people that can submit Q, uh, questions via the Q&A. 
Um, but if you are having issues, if it's not letting you, that's fine. Then you can submit it via the the the, uh, the chat window. Um, just keep in mind that it might be a little bit before I get to it. So uh, let's see what we have for questions before we proceed. Um, 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 um. Lots of good questions that I'm going to put aside until we get to the Q&A portion. So uh, the question on other languages and photos and sharing to social media, those are great questions, but they're not relevant to what we're talking about right this second. So I'm gonna set it aside. So just be patient with them. I will answer every question that comes in, um, but I wanna kind of stay to the focus that we got going on. So, um, Alexis asked the question about, in choosing a template, can the font and color choices be changed? Can we drop in our own logo artwork into the template to get an idea of what it will look like before committing? Those are great questions, but no, you aren't able to, when you're, when you're previewing a site like this, you can't change the color scheme and you can't drop your logo in to see what, it, what yours would look like or anything like that. This is just to give you a sense of what the templates can be like so you can make a decision on which one you wanna start with. Um, but all of those things that you asked about, you can absolutely do. And you can, when you do them, and we'll talk about them a little bit more next week because that's exactly what we're going to start doing next week is focusing on fonts and colors and all that stuff. When you're setting that stuff up, you can do it and you can see how that stuff is applied before saving it. So you can kind of sample some of that stuff. Um, so that's, that's kind of the alternative of, of what she's asking. Uh, <clears throat> Tina asks, I haven't created my logo yet. Can I change it later on for my name to my logo? Absolutely. You can change your, you can change from your business name to a logo or from a logo to a business name anytime you want. Um, another question said, what if we don't have a business name yet? That's perfectly fine. You don't have to come up with one right away. You'll see when we order up our site, you'll see what happens when we don't have a business name. And that's perfectly fine. We don't have to have one right now. Uh, we need to have one at some point, but not right now. So, <clears throat> Liz says, can you change fonts on Foodie Bonanza display if you don't have a logo? Yep, we'll talk more about that a little bit next week. For the social media icons, Alexis says, uh, you said we have to have them there, but does that mean we have to have a Pinterest page, Twitter page, etc.? You don't have to have them at all. There's just the option, if you have social media accounts, and you'll see this when we order up your site, you can put that information there, and these logos will automatically populate. That's what I mean by you can't change them. You can't change where they are. You don't have to use them at all. Um, I mean, if you don't have a Pinterest or Facebook or Google Plus or whatever, that's 100% fine. If you do, this is a nice way to add those links to your website. Very really easy. That's all. Uh, Glenda says, does your business name have to be the same as your, your URL? That's a great question, and I'm going to touch on it in just a moment when we order up our site. Um, and then last question we have. Uh, Pablo says, when we choose a template, is it final or can we change our mind? Yes, you can change your mind. Really try to push for you to take some time and make a decision first. Um, but it's possible. And like I said, I'll talk about that in the Q&A portion because I don't want to get sidetracked with it because I know what's going to happen when I do it. Everybody that has a question on it is going to ask a question on it. And we're going to spend 20 minutes on it. So... Um, but yes, you can change your template. There are some hiccups with it. Um, but all, ultimately, you want to take the time and pick a template that you like because of whatever reasons you like it. I can't stress enough, don't pick a template because you like the way it looks. Because you are tasked with the job of changing the website to fit you. None of these websites fit you right now. They're just pretty sample websites that we put together for you. So ultimately, you, you want to change as much as possible 
to represent you in your health coaching practice. Now, you don't have to change a lot, but you should change a decent amount of the stuff. So, um, picking the way that it, it looks, picking a template by the way that it looks, it just isn't really the, the route that I recommend doing it, if that makes sense. I know it's hard, um, but that's just kind of the route that, that I suggest. Um, I always tell people, if I could get you all in a room right now, and if you all had your websites, and I could say, okay, whose website looks like this, and I could point in the template, and everybody who raised their hand, you could look around the room and see how all of you have the exact same website. You know, the way that it looks, the, the, the content that's on it, you all have the same website. So what are you going to do to stand out from everybody else? You know what I mean? So that's kind of uh, what we're trying to focus on throughout this entire series trying to show you that it's it's easy to go through and do these things and make your website stand out from everybody else's so. uh, elizabeth says can you move the social media icons again no um, kristen asks, can you how can you change your url we'll talk about that um Okay, so that's the rest of the questions are great questions, and I will get to them, but I want to move forward with what we're doing. So, um, okay, so that's it for the templates. Again, I, I highly recommend taking time to go through it. If you've already picked your template and you you don't like it and you want to maybe change, you can browse what the templates look like on our, our main Integrative Nutrition Live Edit page. If you go in the menu here, there is a page for templates. And this is almost exactly the same as our option that we have here. This page right here lets you preview every one of the templates. So you can see a real-time example of what the templates are. It's the same thing, they're just links to the live demos. So if you're thinking about changing your template, you're not happy with the one that you have, I, I highly recommend checking out this page, spending some time going through the different templates and figuring out which one you want to potentially change to, okay? I'll put this link in the chat window for everyone, just so you have it. There you go. All right, so now we're going to pick a template to work with. And this is the template that we're gonna use the entire, we're gonna order up our site now, and this is the site we're gonna use for all five parts of our, of our series. So you're gonna be able to see the progression as we move along. Because um, I don't like Health Coach Pro, but you know what? I'm gonna use Health Coach Pro today. It's my least favorite template, but I'm going to use it because people use it all the time. All right, so when you get here, you need to fill out this information. You need to create an account. So you put your name, and you can put your last name, and you can put your company, and your address information, and your phone number, and your email address, and then you come up with your password. Now, this email address that you use, um, generally it's the one that you were sent your, your, uh, your trial invitation for. Um, that's the one that you want to be able to use for that. Um, the password is whatever you want it to be, so you can create a password that's easy for you to remember. When you do this process, write down this information. This is the email address that you're always going to use to log into your site, and this is the password you're going to use to log into your site. Write that information down. Write it on a post-it note. Write it in a Word document. Scribble it on your desk, wherever. Keep that information. You're going to need it every time you wanna work on your website, okay? Next thing that comes up that confuses people is this account domain section. When you order a site, you have to give it a name so you can get to it. This section here, account domain, is not what is going to be your final URL. Um, 
if I have my website and I want it to be alexshealthcoaching.com, that's great. That doesn't apply right here. This part right here is just a name to give my site so I can get to it. It can literally be whatever you want it to be. If you don't know what your business name is, fine. Put your first and last name. You know, if you don't want to put your first and last name, you can literally put whatever you want. It doesn't matter. This URL is only used to get to your website while you're working on it. It's used for our billing purposes so we can look up your account when we need to. And it's used for our support purposes if you submit a ticket and you have a question so we can look up your site. That's it. It's not anything your clients are ever going to see. It's not anything you're going to use for your business. So you don't have to, to worry about it. You don't have to stress about it. It's just give it a name. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. It can be as simple as you want it to be. It can be as silly as you want it to be. It really doesn't matter whatsoever. Okay? So what I'm going to put here is website. And if you spell something wrong, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Like I said, this, this information doesn't matter. You only need it to get to your website so you can work on it. So as long as you know what that information is, that's all that matters. So I'm just going to call this building a website 2018. I'm going to agree to my services here and I'm going to click order site. And then you're going to take to this screen and it's going to go through this process and then you're going to get this uh, screen that says your website is ready to go and this is the link right here that you're going to click on to log into your website it's always going to be whatever your url is with the backslash login at the end so if i click on this it's going to take me to my website it's going to automatically log me into the site because that's the information that i used to create it you should also be getting an email to the email address you used when you signed up that says, welcome to live edit. Here is your URL. Here is your login information. If you don't see that information, check your spam and junk folder because it might be the first time you'd be getting an email from live edit in that sense. So it might go into your spam or junk folder, but you should absolutely be getting an email with all of that information for you. When you get that email, save it write down that information again it's going to be important information you're going to need all the time okay now as we sit here you can see that there's this little status bar that's setting up your account what it's doing is it's actually creating the website for you and while you're sitting here waiting you can fill out some of this basic information <clears throat> let's see what do we have uh alexis says how did you get to the account creation page you should be able to get to it via the um, trial invitation link that you received via email it should be an email link that you click on takes you to that page and so forth if you lost your trial invitation you can always reapply for one um, if you haven't gotten it yet you will get one um, I can't remember when you get one throughout the course of your um, your class block but you should um, be getting one um, if you haven't gotten one or if you need to request a new one, you can go to this link right here, and I'll put this in the chat window. Just fill out the form and submit it, and you will get an email notification with your, your trial request. If you've received an invitation but you haven't done anything with it and then when you try and it says it's expired use the same link to request a new one uh caitlin says will our websites always have live at aurora.com for the ending no that is again only used when you are working on your site to get rid of the live at aurora.com is the process that we call going live. That's where you purchase a custom URL from someplace, um, GoDaddy, wherever. Um, that's going to be the URL that you're going to use for your business. And then the going live process is the process of, of linking that URL to your website and making your website visible for the world to see. Right now, the only people that can visit your website are the people that you've given your website address to. So like 
building a website 2018.liveataurora.com. Nobody can get to that unless I specifically give them that address. They can't go on Google and search for me. They can't go on Yahoo and search for me. They're never going to find me. Okay? So I can work on my website in complete anon uh, anonymity um, because nobody else can see my website. Okay? And then the going live process is a whole different process, which generally I recommend people to do as the last thing that they do. I see a lot of health coaches, they order up their site. First thing they do is they take their URL and they make it live. That's great, but you made it live with a generic website that says nothing about you. So nobody's going to find you because there's nothing on it about you. So I generally just, it's, I tell people, um, your website is like your office. Right now it's under construction. You don't invite people in when it's under construction. You wait until it's, it's done um, or until you're, you're ready for it. So that's when you should ultimately go live with your site. So. Um, Kim asks, what is the difference of using Live Edit versus Squarespace, etc.? cetera? Uh, we have a, a partnership with IAN. So you'll get things with our websites like the recipe app and the IN blog feed and IN forms and all that stuff that you can't get anywhere else. Other than that, they're just different web platforms. Um, every web platform is a little bit different, um, you know, as far as how they work and so forth. Um, but like I said, we have a specific partnership. We have specific applications that we developed for IN that nobody else can use. So... Um, but that's why we, you get a free trial. You can try it out. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Not every platform is for everybody. Um, if you like Squarespace or something else, that's perfectly fine. You can you can certainly build your website there. Um, but that's why we give you a free trial so you can try it out. Okay, again, if you have any questions... Please, please, please submit them via the Q&A portion and not the chat. Um, the, the chat is just a running list, so I have to keep scrolling through and trying to find questions that I didn't answer. Uh, the Q&A portion actually just keeps a nice little tally of the questions for me. Um, it just makes things infinitely easier, and it ensures that I can answer all of your questions. So if you have a question, please utilize the Q&A feature. Um, it, it'll make it so much easier for everybody um, if you do that. Uh, Laura did ask a question. Um, do you start the trial period as soon as you register to st and start building your site or when you go live? As soon as you do what we're doing right now, as soon as you clicked that getting started and you created that account and you clicked order your site and it, w and it took you to this screen, that's when your trial starts. So my trial started right now. Okay, so while we're sitting here on this site, we have our general information stuff. Um, there's only a few things you need to fill out right now, and if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see what those are. <coughs> the sections that have the stars for requirement, um, support information and billing information, that's the only information you need, to sub you need to fill out right now. The rest of it you can come back and do later on. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'll just do a quick overview of what these sections are. I'm not going to fill any of them out right now because we'll take care of that later. <coughs> but I'll just give you a general sense of what these sections are for. This general information says your primary domain. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you don't need this section. Um, if you have a specific URL, um, myhealthcoachwebsite.com, for example, you could put that information there. It doesn't populate anywhere. It doesn't do anything, so it's not necessarily required. It's nice for us if we have a support issue and we look into your account, but it's not necessary at all. <coughs> so you don't have to feel obligated to fill it out. The business name is the business name of your, of your, of your site. <coughs> so if you don't have a graphic logo, your business name is what gets populated instead. And by default, it will throw in your website address. 
um, just because it needs to have something. So you can see right here, my business name is building a website 2018.liveataurora.com. Now, if I don't know what my business name is, that's perfectly fine. I can leave this the way it is, but I can also just call it uh, building a website 2018. Actually, just I'm gonna call it just building a website. So that's gonna be my business name for now. I can come back and change this anytime I want to, so it's not really the, a big deal to do that now, okay? Your tagline is, if you have a little tagline that you want to use, um, you can put it in there and it'll show up actually right underneath your business name. So what I'm gonna do for my tagline so we can see it, I'm just gonna put the 2018 edition. And that's gonna be my tagline. Um, over here, if I have a graphic logo, this is where you can add it. Um, you can click on the browse button and find the, the file within your computer. Um, you can drag it from your desktop if you have it on your desktop and just hover it over the spot and it'll upload the logo, so forth. Um, but if you don't have one, that's fine. You can upload a logo just like with your business name. You can change that information at any time. Same with the favicon. By default, it's either going to be the live edit icon here or the, the IN one. Your favicon is the little logo that goes up here on the top of your tab. So it's like a mini logo. Um, again, it's something that you want to change at some point, but it's not necessary to do right this second, so you don't have to worry about it. <coughs> if you scroll down, you see the contact information and your location information. These do not matter. They don't automatically appear anywhere on your site. So it's not, it's not a huge deal if you, put, if you fill that information out or not. It, it really doesn't matter. So you can add stuff there if you want to. You don't have to worry about it. Nobody's going to be able to see it um, outside of anybody like uh, our billing team can see it, our support team can see it. Um, potential clients, anyone who visits your website is not going to see that information. So you don't have to worry about it. I said the only required information is the support and billing information and this is strictly required for our purposes so if we have to contact you this is the the information that we can use to contact you if we need to so that's why it's required um, you can just simply put in your email if you want to <clears throat> you can put in your phone number or your name put in your phone number you can put in your email address and again you want to use the email address if possible use the email address that you use to log in but you want to make sure that it's the email address that you check you you check it regularly if someone contacts you you're going to see that email um, so that's that's something to keep in mind there and your billing information it's generally going to be the same information as your support with your phone number and your billing email like I said, those are the only things that are required. So if you just fill out that, you can click save and you'll be good. Um, and then we have our social media sections. Uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit. If you have a Facebook page, if you have a Twitter account and so forth, you can put the, your URLs here and they will automatically create those logos. Um, not going to do anything with them right now. We'll touch on it a little bit as we go. Um, but for right now, I'm just filling out my support information and I put in my business name and that's it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save settings. You can see a little confirmation there that says it's saved. And then I can click view site and it takes me to my homepage. So this is my homepage. When you get here for the first time, you have this little tour that you can click on that says show me how it works. And it'll kind of navigate through everything like edit mode and kind of show you the nuts and bolts of how everything works. Um, so that's that's cool, uh, but we're gonna talk about that anyway, so that's what we do. So now that we're here, we're on our website. We, we are now ready to, to begin working on our website, doing whatever we wanna do with that, okay? So that's the process of ordering up your website, okay? Um, pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Um, before we get into anything as far as changing your website or anything like that, um, that's more of what we're going to do next week. This week, I wanted to focus more on this process, getting started, ordering up your website. Okay, so now that I have my website, 
what do I want to do? First off, you want to take your website information, your URL. If you can, create a bookmark in your web browser so you can get to it rather easily. Write that information down. Whatever you need to do, this is the information that you're going to need um, for the time being to, to access your website and so forth. Okay. The next thing you want to do is your login information. You should have, like I said, you should have gotten an email that has your username and your password to log into your site. That's information that you want to keep handy. Like I said, write it down. Whatever you need to do to remember it, do that. When you need to log into your site, the easy way to do it is you just go to your website. So here's our website. And then you just, at the end of the URL right here, type in backslash login. That's it. And then you'll take into the login screen where you enter in your email and your password. If you forgot the password, click forgot password, enter in the email again, and it has to be the email you use to sign up for the site. No other email is going to work, so it has to be that one. And then click change password. What will happen is you will get an email with a different password, a temporary password that you can use to log into your site. Okay. If you don't get that email, make sure to check your spam junk folder, etc. Um, you should be getting it. it. Should be coming from Live Edit, just like your your welcome email. Once you are logged in, you will see your toolbar up at the top of the screen, like so. If you're using your temporary password, you can just go over to your profile. If you hover over to your profile, go down to account settings or manage profile. Sorry, if you go down to manage profile you can click on password and this is where you can change your password okay you can change it to something else that you want to make sure that it is easy to remember and so forth um, you also have the info section this is information for your profile you can add in a picture and all this stuff nobody's gonna see this except for us um, uh, supporting and, and so forth uh, a profile information is beneficial for blog posts if you choose to have your author um, put on there, which we can talk about later, that's where your profile information comes in with your picture and stuff. Otherwise, nobody else is going to see it. So it that's not super important, but you can always go, board, go ahead and, and do that. Once you're logged in, um, we have our edit and so forth, which we'll, we'll get more into next week. Um, but if you want to go back in and change any of those settings that we had when we first started, you go under your menu and click site settings and that takes you back to this screen so this is where you can go through and make these changes once again and and do that kind of stuff okay and again since we're on health coach pro if we open up our menu I can see that this is my business name this is where my logo would be um, it's kind of hard to see because the menu is up there but this is where my logo is. It's not this right here. This is literally just a picture. So because I don't have a graphic logo in my site settings, my business name is showing up, which is fine. I can change it whenever I want. And we'll get into next week, we'll get into how we can change the way that looks, make it look better and so forth. Okay. Um, let's see what we got for, for questions before we move forward. <coughs> Um, again I'm going to answer all the questions that have been submitted so if I haven't gotten your question just be patient I will get to it um, I'll try to get to it as, as quickly as we can um, but I want to make sure that we tackle the relevant ones before we move on so uh, question that came up how long is the free trial once you like we said what the trial starts once you go through this process and order up your site my trial started I have my site if I go to my dashboard which is right here or if I go under my profile and click account settings when I get to this screen it'll tell me right here my free trial ends Friday November 1st 2019 one year from today so it's a one year free trial, obviously. Um, if I go to my dashboard, 
I can click on the account settings listing right here and it'll show me that same information so it'll you always have access to see when how long your trial is and when it's going to expire um, if your trial is getting close to expiring you'll start getting emails from us saying hey just a reminder that your trial expires in 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is so but you always have that information available to you at any point in time <clears throat> let's see what else do we got here Joe has a question. Is this migratable? If we choose elsewhere, would we have to build a new one from scratch? If you decide to go with a different platform, yes, you have to build a new website from scratch because it's a different platform. If you don't like the live edit platform and you want to move to Squarespace, you have to start completely from scratch with Squarespace. Or if you want to move to Wix, you have to start completely from scratch with Wix. They're all different systems. They're all different platforms, so they all work differently. Um, can the favicon be changed to the IAN logo? Uh, yes, if you have a, a logo file you can use for that, sure. You can absolutely change it. Again, you can just do that in the site settings, um, and you can change it there. Um. Uh, Pam has a question what if my email changes from when I started my setup um, your email that you used when you ordered your site is the email you need to use to log in um, once you are logged into your site you can go to your account settings and you can update your information here and here so we can contact you appropriately and so forth but you still need to use that same email address to log in um, technically you could go into your dashboard and go into users and you can create a new user for yourself with a new email address if you wanted to do it that way um, you could just create a user enter in your email address and click create and then make sure to check the admin box and if you were using an alternate email once you create one click the admin box you can click on this green button right here and it'll send an email to that email address with a password so you can do it that way if you needed to Question, can I re-sign up for the trial with the link you sent earlier with a different email than today? I want to switch it to my personal email, not my work email. Nope, you only get one trial. We have a record of you what, regardless of what email you used. So you, you can't get two trials. You can change your information. We just went through how you can change your email information if you need to, but you can't request a, another trial with a different email address. You only get one. Lots of really good questions that I'm going to get to here shortly. Um, I want to finish up what we're talking about and then move on. Lots of really good questions though. And I will make sure to get to each and every one of them. All right, so we have our template. We have it ordered up. The, the last thing that I want to talk about just a little bit, and we'll get into it a little bit more as we go, um, but generally what, what I try to recommend for people, once you've gotten this far, you've ordered up your site, before you start getting into changing things and picking colors and, and changing pictures and so forth, kind of think about what it is that you want to do with your website. Um, so 
So I have a little slideshow here. So one of the things that I, I always tell people to think about is what is the purpose of your website? So you have a website now. That's great. That's awesome. You have a free trial for a year, but what are you going to do with it? Like, what is the purpose of your website? Why do you want one? Um, you know, other than just you have a, a website for a free trial. That's great. What are you going to do with it? Um, you know, do you want your website to inform and educate people about, you know, your health coaching practice? Or if you focus on healthy eating, do you just want to promote healthy eating? If you, pro if you focus on, on fitness and a healthier lifestyle, do you want to just inform people about that and educate them? Is that, is that really all you want to do with your website? Um, do you want to promote yourself? Um, you know, do you want to, you, do you have a fantastic story that, that inspired you to, to live a healthier life? Do you want to promote that story, you know, et cetera? Or do you have services do you want to sell? Do you, you know, are you trying to look for active clients? Do you have products you want to sell? You know, what it is do you want to do with your website? You know, every website has a purpose that doesn't just exist for the sake of existing. When someone goes to a website, you want them to do something when they get there. So you need to start kind of thinking about what it is you want people to do when they get there. And that's the next thing that I have. What do you want people to do when they get to your website? Do you want them to, to read all about your story? Do you want them to kind of... Um, get a sense of who you are. Do you want to blast them with healthy eating tips, recipes, whatever? Or do you want them just to simply contact you for a consultation or sign up to work with you or whatever? It's generally easier to go through and, and set up your website if you know what you want people to do when they get there. Okay, so these are just things that I think everybody should start thinking about when you're getting started with your website. You know, write it down on a piece of paper, make an outline, use a Word document, whatever. Just kind of talk it out with yourself and kind of come up with a plan of, of what it is that you want to do and what you want people to do when they get to the website. You know, do you want people to sign up for something? Like if we look at the Health Coach Pro website, the first thing that we have in the middle of the page is to sign up for a free cleanse cheat sheet. So that's the first thing that people see. Now, do you want that to be the first thing that people see? You know, are you worried that when someone comes to this website and the first thing they see is, hey, sign up for something, and they're gonna be like, nope, I don't wanna do that, and they leave your website? You know, is that something that you want them to do? <clears throat> do you want them to contact you? Um, sometimes people will, you know, you won't have a sign up form. You'll just have schedule this free consultation or contact me to, to, to get started or contact me to learn more. You know, sometimes people would prefer that they go to the website and just click on a link to call them or email them or schedule an appointment and then you can talk about all of the things that you can offer versus having them read it on your website. Um, do you want them to be able to buy now? Do you want to just sell services, uh, schedule appointments and do all that stuff so they can just literally come to your website and click a button and pick a time and that's it? You know, you kind of think about how you want potential clients to interact with you in that sense. You know, coming up with those kind of plans or having a general idea of how you want people to, to work when they get to your website can make things a lot easier going forward. And then what kind of pages do you think you need? Um, every template that you have, regardless, every website that we have, every template, doesn't matter has the same pages. They're just pages that we thought would be helpful for you. Um, the pages that I am thought would be helpful for you. So there's a home page, there's an about me page that talks about you. Um, there's also a my training page that talks about the education through I am. Um, there's a work with me page that has the health coaching page that talks a little bit about you know, some of the, the strategies that I am promotes. Um, same thing with my approach. <coughs> Where it talks about some of that stuff that I am um, promotes to, to people. Um, there's health history forms. 
if you're using the health history forms, these are the IN health history forms that, that you have access to. Um, and then there's the recipe section if you're using recipes. Um, there's a calendar that can display your calendar and your availability um, for things or events that you're attending and, and so forth. Um, there's a blog if you want to use a blog. And then there's a contact page. Now all of these pages are here for, for you to use, but you don't have to use any of them. It's 100% up to you. Keep in mind, this is your website and it's your health coaching practice. You can do whatever you wanna do. If you don't wanna do anything with recipes, fantastic, you don't have to. If you don't wanna do a blog, you don't have to. If you don't wanna have an about me page or a my training page or a health coaching page or any of these other pages, you don't have to. You can have pages that say and do whatever you want them to do. So that's why I, I was talking about what pages do you think you need? Are you going to need a My Approach page? Are you going to need a About Me page? Are you going to need a My Training page? I'm always a big believer, and if you've watched any of the other um, series where we build on a site, I think the About Me page and the My Training page are kind of the same thing. So I always combine them together and make one page that tells about me and about my training. Um, so, I mean, you could certainly do that if you wanted to. So it's important to kind of think about what kind of pages you need to achieve the goals that we talked about. So if you know what you want people to do with your website, what pages do you think you need to allow them to do that? You know, just these are just things that you should start kind of thinking about as you're working on your website. Uh, like I said, you can write it down, you can make an outline, whatever you need to do. And I think that's a, it's a good plan to start building out your website, okay? Um, the last thing that I'm gonna point out, well, two things, is on the same Integrative Nutrition Live Edit page that we talked about with the templates, we actually have a section called Spotlight Contest Winners. Uh, we did a contest a few months back where we had health coaches submit their websites and we went through and we picked some websites that were um, good representations of what's possible with the Live Edit platform. So here on this page we have, I think, five, four examples of health coaches who have gone through and worked on their websites or had us work on their websites for them and actually created really good representations of websites. And you can go here and you can visit any one of these websites. And I highly recommend you take some time to do it so you can kind of get a sense of, of what other people are doing. Every one of these websites has a different focus to it. Um, Barbara does a little bit more than just health coaching. She does yoga stuff. She works with medical professionals and her website talks about all of those things. Um, Justina talks really more about wellness and fitness and, and healthy eating, and so that's what her websites talk about. Um, Alicia talks about her strategies and her personal approach to health coaching. And Gareth does the same thing. Gareth is, is all about healthy eating, and her, her website is really focused on healthy eating and recipes. You know, So they're all really good examples of websites that have great purpose to them so you can kind of see well did they use the about me page do they still have these health coaching pages what pages are they using to accomplish their goals so I think they're fantastic examples for you to see what other people are doing I'll put that in the chat window for you and then finally we have our live at a training site. And this is the site that many of you use to uh, sign up for the webinar. Um, this is kind of a, a, a nice resource type of website that we set up for you to kind of provide, I guess, all of our resources in one easy to find place. Um, so this is just simply liveatatraining.com. I'll put that link in the URL, in the chat window there. Um, there's a lot of different links on here. We have our appointments. There's links to our webinars. There's links to the education portal. Um, this is where you can go through and find all of our help guides and videos and so forth. 
Um, and there's just some just general general tips. Um, if you haven't started your trial yet, you can click there and you'll be taken to uh, our instructional page on how to go through and start your trial. It actually talks about everything that we covered today as far as ordering up your site and filling out your account information and so forth. Um, there's also a link to request a new trial invite if you need it. Um, and then we have sections on, on getting started. So once you've ordered up your site, once you've done what we've done today, now what? Well, we have this lovely little thing called the Getting Started Checklist. And this is just a handy little checklist with really easy things to do that you can check off as you do them. So today, you could check off step one because we ordered up your site so you can bookmark and write down your login information so we can get there. Complete the site settings. That's where we talked about adding in our business name and our contact info. Um, you can always go back and redo it, but if you've done some of that stuff, you can click on it. Yep, I've done that. Next up, make a website plan. That's what we just talked about, coming up with a plan and a purpose and what kind of pages do you want to do. Um, you know, this just just general recommendations to kind of think about some of that stuff ahead of time. Um, it makes things just that much easier as you go along. So this checklist is really great. You can download it. You can print it off. Um, if you download it, it's clickable. You can click the check boxes. It has links on it you can click to. So if you're not sure about the site settings, you can click on it. It'll take you to our Getting Started video that is an overview of what we talked about this morning. Um, every one of the links on there sh <coughs> should be active and working. But you can go through and just check off these things, these little tiny things that you can do bit by bit. And then by the time you get to the bottom of the checklist, you're done with your website so that's always found on our getting started page it's the first option right down here um, I'll put the link in the chat window as well so there's some helpful information there we also have links back to our education portal with some of the more popular um, resources like editing text and adding pictures and our section on the recipe app and so forth and then we have information on our webinar which you all know because you attended this week's session and so forth um, we have a question section so frequently asked questions um, we provide you with the answers and the direction on this section um, as well as how to access the portal for additional information so this is a really nice little website put together to kind of give you all the, the, the help that you need in a, in a nice, easy to find place. So, <clears throat> um, but yeah, that pretty much covers what we, I wanted to tackle today. I really wanted to focus on the getting started, getting our site up and running and kind of starting to think about a little bit what we're going to be doing next week. Next week, we're going to tackle picking out our colors. We're going to talk about changing our fonts. We're going to talk about how we can change out pictures and how we can start making the website just look more like our website versus the standard Health Coach Pro. Okay? Um, again, our webinar is going to continue every week. Uh, we'll have the one break between uh, for Thanksgiving, but we'll do the same time next week um, and everything like that. So um, we should be all set there um, the videos will be posted every every day so if you can't make next week's webinar that's fine you can go back in and, and watch the video and catch up on what you missed um, outside of that um, I think we did a pretty good job tackling everything I wanted to cover today so hopefully we can continue this process and, and keep it confined to to our five weeks here so let's see um, check out some of these other questions um, okay, so all these questions that have been submitted are great questions and we're going to have, I'm going to go ahead and tackle them in the, the Q&A portion right at the moment. Um, but if you don't want to stick around for the Q&A portion, by all means, you're you uh, happy, you're more than willing, more than free to jump off. Um, the video does not include the Q&A portion just because it kind of goes all over the place, makes the videos really long. Um, but if you have submitted a question, I ask you just to be patient and, and stick around if you can, and I will do my very best to answer them as, as quickly as possible for you. 
Um, other than that, you are free to hop off and hopefully you found today's session helpful. Uh, like I said, it's really more geared for, for people that are just getting started. Um, but next week, we'll, we'll, we'll start getting more into the guts of it. And as we progress, you'll see more and more of, of what we're, we're, we're going to be doing. Um, and if you're kind of eager to see what that kind of stuff is, I do recommend checking out our last year's webinar. Um, so in our webinar video gallery, uh, starting on page three, I believe, is when we started with last year's. Um, part one is very much like what we did today. Part two is a little bit of what we're doing next week. Um, part three is really where we start actually physically working on the site. So if you want to skip ahead to that kind of stuff, you can certainly check out last year's webinar. Um, I think it's a really good informative session um, to show you um, how it works and how everything works. So if you wanted to jump ahead to that, you certainly can. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of what we'll be working with, last year we picked the Saber template, I think. Um, so for those of you that, rem that remember what, not that, if you remember what the Saber template looks like, Saber or organic, I really can't remember. I think it was organic actually. So this is the organic template that we started with. And then by the time we were done after seven episodes, um, this was our website. So we turned this into this over seven weeks. And it was very simple. We did a one page every week. So we'll cover how to do things like this very, very easily. Um, so nothing here was overly complex or overly difficult. But it was easier because we had a plan. We had a color scheme, we had a plan. So it was just sit down, do it, and you're done. Okay, so that's kind of an idea of what, what we're doing. Um, like I said, you can check out last year's uh, series to actually see how that website was put together. All right, with that said, I think we'll hop into our Q&A portion. So again, if you don't wanna stick around for the Q&A, you are welcome to hop off, um, otherwise, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience today, and hopefully you found it helpful, um, and will join us again next week. We'll send out the email notification just like we did for this one. Um, if you have submitted a question, uh, please stick around and, and, and let me give it, get a chance to answer it for you, um, and ask any questions that you want. So I sit and answer questions as long as we have them. So if you've got questions, fire away. Other than that... Uh, We'll call it a day. So enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the, the beginning of November. And hopefully we will see you all again next week. Thanks, everyone.